What's going on everybody? I'm Mike. This is Bonsai Pop. And yes, it is that time again, the reopening of the Hellmouth. And today, not only are we talking about one of my favorite anime of all time, but one of my favorite franchises of all time. Vampire Hunter D. Last year when Grant was still here, he had the honor of covering both movies, the original and Bloodlust, but now, now it's my turn. And the reason we covered those in the first place is because of the raging clue I get every time I think about the gorgeous Hunter and his many, many adventures. This, my dudes, is Vampire Hunter D. Let's get into it. I just quickly wanted to say thank you so much for watching our Helsing video last week. The subscribers really came in and pulled it through and helped that video succeed and prevail. I'm hoping it's going to happen this time again. However, not everything we cover is always trending. Vampire Hunter D definitely not trending right now. So if you like these kinds of videos and you want to help support the channel, the only way we're going to survive is through Patreon. We have an excellent community over there. We have awesome tiers set up for everybody. Entry is just a dollar and you can check it out from there. So why not go take a look? Thank you so much for your time. On with the show. D holds a special place in many people's hearts for various reasons. His first movie, simply titled Vampire Hunter D, was a reimagining of the first D novel by Hideyuki Kikuchi, also titled Vampire Hunter D. The film dropped in 1985 onto an unsuspecting world. It was the first animated horror movie for adults that was ever put out in the US, and man, it is a treat. It has all the look and feel of the mid 80s anime, coupled with hyper violence that marked the time period. The world was a grim wasteland filled with unimaginable monsters and worse, the vampires, which plagued humanity. The plot of the film is nothing much to speak about specifically, it was more so the world and the characters which it introduced to a new audience that was revolutionary. Now personally, I am a huge vampire stan. As a kid, I was all about it. Castlevania, Blood Rain, Soul Reaver, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Interview with the Vampire, the Universal Classics, I could not get enough. I even got the little Warhammer vampires to paint, even though I didn't play the game. And then Twilight came out, so I stopped telling people I liked vampires. D, however, is next level, inspired. There's so much more to the universe of this character than the films could ever possibly express, and plot-wise, the movie reaches higher than its original source material, at least as far as the books that they're made after are concerned. However, it is that very source material itself wherein the true magic lies. You see, Hideyuki Kikuchi is kind of the man. He's a true classic horror fan who turned his love for the dark into a world of fantasy and intrigue. Also, he doesn't like anime, which is kind of ironic because Bloodlust is one of the best animated features in existence. In our world, there are 37 Vampire Hunter D novels and counting floating around, a series that I have been consuming rapidly since the Varus struck, and I cannot think of a better pastime than curling up with one of Kukuchi-san's novels. And not all of them are officially translated, but at least the first 27 or so should keep you occupied for a while, and they're easily accessible on any e reader. Also, the art in the novels and the covers were created by the legendary Yoshitaka Amano, you know, just the guy who did all the concept art for every single Final Fantasy game. Like, this guy is crazy. I got a bunch of art books by him. Insane. And you're definitely going to be seeing a lot of his work throughout this video. Now, it is truly a rare thing to find a world where you can really immerse yourself, one that keeps its secrets close to the chest but leaks out just enough to keep you in constant wonder. And D is very much a pulp series. There's not necessarily a timeline. Each one is an adventure that D takes part in that kind of stands alone, but gives you its own unique look into the world that D exists in. So starting in 12,090 AD and progressing indefinitely, the tale of D takes place on the frontier described best as the entirety of Eurasia post-apocalypse. In fact, it's more like post-post-post-apocalypse. You see, back in the 90s, humanity destroyed their home with nuclear war, leaving the planet and the human race absolutely decimated. And amongst the cockroaches, another species survived, one that had lain dormant, waiting, calculating, biding their time for their chance to come to power. The vampires. And after a while, living in the new dark ages, humanity had forgotten their ways, the splendor of their technology and sophisticated 90s lifestyle and high-waisted jeans. But the vampires 
didn't forget, so they rose from their coffins and out into the world. Undying and infinitely powerful, they created a new zenith of the night. Their splendor knew no bounds. Their technology far surpassed the previous rulers of Earth. They learned the secrets of interdimensional traversal, space travel, magic, genetic manipulation, and while the humans cowered in fear, the vampires became the new ruling class the nobility. In their initial growth, the nobility reshaped the world in their image, setting up weather manipulators, creating new biomes where they pleased in a world ravaged by a nuclear holocaust. They made a world of night and terror, changing not only the geography of the earth, but life there as well. Genetic terrors from dragons to unstoppable ravenous ants to plant life that ensnare and gorge themselves on any human stupid enough to cross their paths. Clouds that come down from the sky to completely annihilate multi wide with swaths of land and then disappear as quickly as they came. And the grandest spectacle of all was the capital, the pinnacle of the nobles' wealth and achievements at the center of this new frontier. Now the humans were left in the mud to cower in fear and war with each other as they did. In one novel we witness a wasteland of giant robots the size of skyscrapers just left to rust from an ancient war. However, it wasn't just the humans who sought battle, but the nobles as well, and in their journeys, specifically amongst the stars, the nobility met with a new threat of alien invasion. The war between vampires and hostile extraterrestrials lasted eons, and the remnants of hate can still be found on the frontier, buried and waiting to be awoken again. Weapons of mass destruction, planetary Armageddon, as not only are the vampires undying, but so is their anger and the mighty weapons that it birthed. However, seemingly one day, the nobles began to decline and the humans began to rise yet again. It's never explained exactly what happened to the nobles. Perhaps it was natural atrification, true proof that nothing lasts forever, but their age, their time, suddenly came to an end leaving humanity to deal with the never-ending remnants of their former rulers. The capital was the first to go, seized by the frothing masses. Vampires were staked in their coffins. Technologies not understood were taken into the hands of humans to discover their potential. The nobles' numbers dwindled, and with that came a new profession, that of the hunter. The best of the best, swarthy, inhumanly powerful magic wielders, sometimes genetically modified and usually cutthroat deadly. This new class of warriors were hired to sniff out and dispatch the last remnants of the nobility from the frontier. Meanwhile, humanity expanded outward, learning how to cope with the ever-hostile landscape left behind by their former rulers. The setting is at the same time a fantasy, a western, a science fiction, and a gothic horror. And this is where we meet D, an impossibly beautiful man, so good looking he'd make your conservative ass dad instant nut if he looked at the hunter for too long and I'm not not even embellishing. Seriously, anybody who's read a Vampire Hunter D book is actually laughing at that joke. Clad in black with a long coat, traveler's hat, and deadly long sword, D is an enigma. Partnered with left hand or the countenance carbuncle, a symbiotic and equally enigmatic creature living in D's hand, D roams the frontier as a sword for hire. However, he is eternally cursed, for D is a damn peer. Or if you watch Bloodlust, for some reason they call him a Dunpeel, I don't know. Either way, half human, half vampire, D is generally hated and feared by everybody, viewed as disgusting by the nobility and a monster by the humans. He lives his life in solitude, living only for the complete extinction of a race of nobles living long past their time. Impossibly quick, overwhelmingly powerful, beautiful as the moon, and stoic beyond compare, D is the ultimate force in the wasteland. As a damn peer, he can fight by day and by night. He needs little sustenance, and yet there's even more to discover. You see, D is special. I can't tell you how old he is, but it's hinted that he is extremely old. He has powers that no ordinary Dampir could display, being able to unlock doors with the highest noble clearance, understanding completely lost technology, being able to escape pocket dimensions created by his enemies, withstanding and even seeing through psychic attacks. Oftentimes he is more powerful or evenly matched by what would be considered the greatest nobles. All this calls into question his lineage 
lineage or if he was created through biotechnology. And you couple that with his left hand, who seems to have his own vast library of knowledge and can act of his own free will, move independently when the hand is removed, has the ability to suck in projectiles or environmental hazards like poison, and by consuming earth, wind, water, and fire, can actually breathe life back into D if he's struck through the heart. The Dampier is practically invincible, yet he carries with him a sorrow so deep it can strike an unwary passerby and move them to tears. It's always hard to tell exactly what D is thinking because he is so short-spoken to the point of enraging his momentary compatriots or terrifying his enemies. However, when he smiles, it's an image that stays with characters for a lifetime. Now, as far as anime is concerned, D's second movie, Bloodlust, is an absolute pinnacle. Possibly one of my favorite animated films ever, Bloodlust pulls from the third novel in the series, Demon Death, chase and far surpasses it in many ways. It's also directed by my man Yoshiaki Kawajiri who we've talked about many times and the art is truly second to none. It's gorgeous line work, beautiful character design, deep shadows and crooked architecture that you would expect from the world of D. In the novel D and Layla chase down the Count Meyerling and his love just like they do in the movie. However, we do learn a good deal more about the characters, specifically Layla's abuse at the hands of her hunter companions who play the role of the villains in the book. The ending is entirely different as well, climaxing at a derelict spaceport with Borgoff killing Meyerling after D lets the vampire go. D dispatches Borgoff, but not before Meyerling's lady uses her dead lover's hand to pierce her chest, uh, double Sapuku. Romeo and Juliet type of thing. The ending of Bloodlust with Carmilla and the spaceship taking off is far more satisfying and frankly badass. However, the original D film has a very specific charm to it as well, reminiscent of the other hyperviolent classics like Fist of the North Star. Seeing D in action is simply a treat, either way you want it, but it's D himself in the novels and the films that is by far the most fascinating piece to the puzzle of this world. Mysterious worlds and protagonists make for excellent long-running series, but there's so much to take from D in the bits and pieces that were given. Him being a Dampier, belonging neither to the human world nor the world of the nobility, having no way to return to the past, but nothing to look forward to in the future. It is truly a tragic existence. D maintains no connections, yet shows that he's truly a sentimental and caring individual, sometimes doing a job for food he can't even eat, for example, just to say he's doing it for the pay. He finds reasons to help people that fit this weird code while remaining aloof and seemingly cold. However, for someone who cares as much as D occasionally reveals himself to, his life must be excruciatingly lonely. His only real companion is his left hand, and after 17 plus books, I'm still pretty sure D hates him. And I still don't even know what the hell left hand truly is. I suppose another question is why D does what he does anyway. While the movies hint at something having to do with his mother, technically the movies are not canon, so perhaps D loved the nobility, and in its decline, he simply wants to finally put them out of their misery by hunting them down one by one. It's no longer their time anymore. They should go extinct. Maybe he is the harbinger of a new age, but the irony still remains that he has no place in the new age. Without vampires to hunt, D has no goal. So what did he do during the days of the night? What will he do when the night is forever snuffed out? These are the mysteries that surround this enigmatic presence, and I'd love to know your thoughts. And fortunately and unfortunately, I could go on forever and ever talking about how awesome D is and the details of the world, but you should really go and experience it yourself. Pick up a book, read the book, but I'll leave you with one more question. D is a half vampire. While weaker during the day, he can survive in the sun. He will live forever. His skills are peerless. His beauty is far beyond any normal possibility. Like I said, read the book. I, they, they mention it like every five seconds. But the question is, would D's life make you happy? Is life without death really life? How does one improve when they're already perfect? I believe that's the true tragedy of Vampire Hunter D as a character. That deep, deep sorrow that bleeds into passerbys as he strolls into the next town on a mission to slay the demons haunting its citizens. Can we have purpose in our life if life is eternal? Will it not eventually end with meaninglessness? Vampire Hunter D is a work of excellence, a classic, but one that openly asks its readers and viewers to question the world it created and its main character. D isn't a story built around growth and change, but 
one man who's destined to stay the same forever. How could we possibly understand the purpose of an eternal character? And more importantly, should we? So ask yourself these questions, and most importantly, go enjoy yourself some Vampire Hunter D. Hey guys, it's Mike. I hope you enjoyed the video. I just want to send a very special shout out to our Super Saiyan God of the Week, Omni Penguin Mecha. Thank you so much for being one of our high tier patrons. You're the best. Also, our lucky patron of the week is Blink. Blink, thank you again for being one of our patrons and helping to support the channel. And of course, as always, Alpha Sigma, our top patron, you are a god. If you like this video, I recommend checking out the rest of our videos and our Hellmouth playlist. Don't forget to follow us on social media. That is at Bonsai underscore pop on Twitter and Instagram. My name is Mike. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.